Allo, shalom, shalom. Ne rasia di nos teferi. Nen, and we're going to continue with this um, pre uh, pass or pre pesach uh, fasica reasoning. We had left off on the first part of it, seeking to explain a little bit more in, um, in detail the contrast, the contrast between Exodus. And the situation of the Beta Israel being brought into that gracious covenant with the Almighty, where they became or were becoming in laws. But then now, after the golden calf, and the golden calf will be symbolic of this particular area, it's like the crossroads. Let's use this right here to signify this is this, this will be the golden calf, the crossroads right here. Now, this is this is um what they call this uh passion week you understand this is this is what they call the so-called passion week um speaking of the week leading up to the um memorial of the crucifixion of our black lord and savior Jesus Christ Yeshua HaMashiach Joshua now Friday the 6th is um is is Passover when Passover begins for us. So we want to teach a little bit more on how to properly, you know, so that those of us at home and abroad, near and far, who seek to do this in remembrance of our Black Lord and Savior will know some of the basics about it. But we're still in this particular Torah portion, which is um, the 25th, known as Tzav, or Tzau, from Tzawa, command, Tzav, command, is a Zacho, command them, command them. Now, this is, this is the, the book of Leviticus. And what we've seen in this as we've been studying and meditating on it, as is to meditate on the word day and night, is that, you know, these questions come up. Well, well, well why all of these these um, sacrifices, you know, what does the, what's the meaning of all these sacrifices? And we gave the, the hand example of the five types of sacrifices, the bull, the, the sheep or the ram or the lamb, the, the goat, the turtle dove, and the, the pigeon, these particular five types, and the five types are symbolic of the hand. And the hand we know in the Hebrew when we study the, the hieroglyphics and even the, hiero, the, 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 the Hebrew as it's derived from and the connection of the, of the Hebraic ciphers as they connect with the mystery. In other words, within those Hebrew characters, the meaning of the characters, you understand, because what, what was Moses familiar with? Moses, he was learned. You understand that he had a mastery in all the wisdom of the Egypts. Now, that connects with this particular book right here and um, um, Hebrew hieroglyphics. We touched on this before. It's a very interesting, um, a very interesting analysis of both the Hebrew and the hieroglyphics. And in the study of it, it becomes very clear some of these parts of Scripture that we might learn about in Bible study or we've heard about the golden calf and they worship the golden calf. But what's the real meaning of that? And, and, and why was it so serious to take them out of being in-laws now after this trespass and they came under the law? So we learn in the New Testament that we are no longer under the law, you understand, but we actually now become in-laws through the sacrifice of Christ through the sacrifice of our black Lord and Savior. Now, as we begin to study it, we understand that there's the moral law, the Ten Commandments, and then there's the ceremonial law, or there's the law of sacrifice, the law of the korbanot, the law of the sacrifice. But we learn that these are symbolic, or they are types. So as we study the types, not with a veil over our eyes, you know, saying as the Jews and as others who are like the Old Testament only, they reject the Moshiach, 
Therefore, they reject the true illumination of these things. But as we, as we study these things in the light of our black Lord and Savior, it becomes very clear. And as we study the roots of the Hebrew language, the connection with the hieroglyphic and what these are symbolic types of, it becomes very, very clear the, the mystery of God in Christ, as the prophet said, in the latter days, you understand, you shall understand it perfectly. And we're beginning more and more perfectly to really see the connection of this. But without too much further ado, we had touched on the, the two great commandments, love, love the Lord and love Adoni with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And the second great commandment is love thy neighbor as, as yourself or as thyself. So we pointed to the fact that there's a certain order. You understand? The first one, love the, the Lord or love Adoni, love Yahweh, which is the second part of the Shema, hear, O Israel. We've gone into the fact that the Shema or the Simma doesn't mean just to hear, but it means to hear it, to, to feel it. You understand? Like when we say, you feel me? To, to hear it, to feel it, and to obey it, to, to act it out. So to hear, not just to listen to it, but really to, to hear, not just with the ear, but with the inner ear or with the spiritual ear, because then you will get it in spirit. Then the so-called dead letter, you understand? The dead letter, which is really the hieroglyphic letter, becomes a living type of a symbol you understand, when you receive it in spirit and in truth, right? So now the Ten Commandments, Jah's Ten Commands, or the Ten Words, more correctly, the commandment, they hang or they're crucified, as the Word says, on these two. Now the first four, which are on the first tablet, they tell us of how to love Jah. You know, people say, I love God, but, but do you love God or love Jah? the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, the God and Father of Jesus Christ, do you love him according to how he has said to love him, or do you love him your own way? And just to say it once again, that idea of the unconditional, you hear a lot of false preachers, counterfeit pastors, and rest of them talk about this unconditional, you know, the love of God, the love of Jesus is unconditional. That's not really true. There is a condition. The first aspect of the condition is faith. You know what I'm saying? You can't be faithless, you know what I'm saying, and love. You know what I'm saying? You, ha you have to have faith, so that's a condition. You have to receive Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? You have to receive Yeshua as Adoni, as Lord. You know what I'm saying? And therefore, you have to receive his command. 